So with your plugins already established and you've already taken a look at aliases and how to set those up, it's time to take a look at themes. We're going to take a look at this theme and how to get it set up. We're also going to take a look at your profile and see there's things that you can do around the shell. And we're going to look at some compatibility things, some issues that you may have with this plugin and adding power level 10K as one of the new themes. Once again, guys, be sure to stick around for the entirety of the video as I give most of my insights towards the end of the lesson. All right, with that being said, let's jump in. So now that we got some of the basics around aliases a little bit, I'll talk more around some specific commands and we know how to add plugins to oh my ZSH or our ZSHRC file. We're going to add some theming behind this. We're going to change some of the way this looks and feels right now. The current theme that we have right now is the Robbie Russell theme, and you can leave it at that. So I'm going to add a few exports up here, and these are personal preferences and certain things that I like. You don't have to add any of these, but I'm just trying to say you can add other export paths uh, below here. We can exit terminal if we like, and then we can actually just quit this and then we can reopen terminal. So a lot of these preferences for up here can be changed. And if you hit command comma, you can go up here and you can do some theming once again and you hit your profile and you can make certain things visible depending on what you want to see. Do check out the actual terminal series on this stuff and this will help you guys decide what you want to be displayed inside of this. All your settings should remain the same, like nothing should be changed here. Like everything that you've already set up should also be the same as well. There are some things you can do around removing you know, your, your machine name ad or whatever and I'll get into that. But right now we're just going to concentrate on theming. Uh, for now, I don't mind showing that, but like eventually in future series, I'll remove that. So these are just some particular preferences that I like to export out for this machine. All right, it's time to check out the themes. So I'm going to open up a browser and I'm going to open up one more tab and I'm going to provide a link to the themes. Now I'll give you these links guys. So don't worry about, you know, trying to follow the URLs. So right here, we have a list of themes that is available for Oh My ZSH. The default theme is Robbie Russell. You go through the list here, you'll see that you can pick whatever theme you like, however you want your thing to look like. A very popular one that I see around the web is this one. Now I might butcher this, but it's Agnoster or how you say that or AG Noster, I'm not sure. Now it's really about just your flavor, you know, like what you want to do. And as you can see, if you go through, there is a lot of theming. So we'll scroll down a little bit here and I will click on this link and I'll just jump to the official repository. Hey guys, what's up? Kevin here. I just want to give a big shout out to my subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Be sure to give the videos a like, a thumbs up, and start a conversation. Much appreciated. Now let's get back to the video. And the reason I went to the repository is because there's a little bit of a gotcha here when you install this one. You will need this like Powerline um, patch font, right? So we'll click on this as well. And this will take us to Powerline fonts. Now I'm going to keep this open for now and I'll show you what happens when we install it without the power line fonts. Okay. So I'm going to minimize this browser. I'm going to go to our ZSHRC file. I'm going to change the name of the theme right here. I'm just going to source this and save this out. Now, once again, if, if you, if you find this too much, you know, to type out source all the time, we can jump down here and create another alias. This is what aliases are for, but I mean, you gotta be careful because you have too many aliases and you're not using them. It could get uh, complicated, but since I'm doing this tutorial and we're doing this a lot, we're going to actually just create one. Okay. I'm gonna say SRC and I will literally just save this. I'm going to have to source this again. Actually, from now on, you'll see that it will change. Our theme has been applied. We changed our theme from Robbie Russell to this one here. Notice how it renders and it looks kind of weird. Like the things are are slightly different. So let's just open up our browser and we're back at the power line fonts. So here are the steps for installation and we're gonna click on the documentation. Now give this a read if you have a different platform and you wanna figure out how this is done. But we're just gonna jump back over here and the command that we're looking for is this one right here. We're gonna grab this and we're gonna paste this code and it'll clone the fonts for us. Now that we have the fonts, we haven't actually installed them. So we're going to say CD fonts. And if you PWD, we'll see that we're in our fonts directory. And then we're going to run the next command in line, which is install and it's dot sh. Okay. So it's going to copy the fonts and then it's going to install them. So let's go back to our browser and in those steps where we CD into fonts, we change this and then we're going to do a little bit of cleanup with auto suggestions on, it becomes a little bit cleaner and we can just really just type in fonts. 
If it doesn't exist, it won't show up, right? It'll be like no such directory fronts. And then you're like, what happened? Well, we're actually in that directory. So we need to move back one. Now that you have auto suggestions on, you can just type it out and it'll remove those fonts. So we're gonna say yes. If you get a permission denied, which is more than likely, you'll have to sudo this command and we're gonna have to remove fonts. So I'm just hit command comma to get inside preferences. And then I go inside my profiles directory and I'm going to change this font and we're going to click on all fonts. This is the font that we're going to be looking for. We're going to choose this one and you can set it to whatever size you'd like. And as soon as you see that I click that, you notice something happened in terminal. Those question marks and those odd characters are no longer there. And once that's done, you can just close this. So it's always gonna look like this for now, according to the Agnoster theme. We're gonna to go to the GitHub repository for Power Level 10K. So we can click on Get Started and I'll walk you through how to do this. Do pay attention to this command because you're gonna to have to run this to configure this once it's done. What we can do is we can grab this set of instructions here and we can install it. If you have OhMyZSH installed, which we do, we're gonna run this one instead. And we're gonna open terminal. We're gonna paste this in. I did this the git clone way, but we could do this with homebrew, but I don't wanna get into that right now. So there's other ways to do this. So we could, you know, grab the homebrew library and run power level 10K. Now, if we go and check our ZSH RC file, we're still missing some things here and we're gonna add another theme. Okay, so we're just gonna copy this for now, right? And then we're gonna add the power level 10K theme and then we're gonna hit save. We're gonna source this, SRC. And now this is where the configuration begins. Just to let you know, there will be more lessons in the series. So don't forget to click the notification bell and get informed when the new lessons in the series drops. Thanks again, guys. Take care of yourselves and I will see you guys next time.